<laughs> All right, so we are back at Scottish Aquatics doing a fish room tour. It's been almost exactly a year since we've been here. And a lot of new stuff, huh? Lots changed. Uh, Paladariums, lots. planet tanks. So got much all. going on. So much going on. All nature style. You guys will love it. Uh, we got some good aquascapes. We got things that just kind of clattered together. So it's a big mess of stuff. You guys are going to like it. Uh, and we're first going to take a look at the discus, 120 gallon? Yes, sir. Let's all start right. with there. Let's do it. All right, so the first tank we're going to look at is a 120 gallon discus tank. Looks like community tank even. Pretty much. So explain to us what you got in here. All right, so we have... Uh, well, I wanted to go with the uh, schooling effect, right? So we got a bunch of these smaller fish. Um, I threw uh, a bunch of neon tetras in here. We got amber rose tetras, uh, raspberry heads. We have uh, a couple discus. We have super red bristlenose placos, stir by corridoras, a couple fancy placos, some L333 king tigers, uh, also a gold nugget placo in here. Uh, this tank is, I love the dimensions, it's 48 inches by 24 inches by 24 inches, so it's kind of more of a cube effect than, you, than my previous 125 gallon that I had. Massive amounts of Anubias, as you can tell, some of those are huge, if I were to pull them out they'd be the size of my torso. Uh, we have Bulbitis, is, is some of the other bushy plants back there. Back here. We have some Cryptocrines in the front, we have Jungle Val. And that's basically it as far as the plants goes. Uh, we have a bunch of wood here piled up there just kind of as a providing a depth effect trying to bring as many of those plants up into the air and off the ground as possible. Now do I not see a filter besides a sponge filter? Uh, nope, sponge filter only. Wow. Uh, two 125 gallon size sponge filters kind of stacked one on top of the other and a power head and that's it. I'm taking after uh, Lucas Brett's on that one huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually recently thought about doing, trying to do a no filter uh, style tank like he does. No heater, no filter. So tell me about this guy here. All right, so that is Spike. He is one of the uh, discus that we've bred previously. He was a very unique discus compared to all the rest. He had a special sort of spike pattern on his fin going on where he has separations in the fin creating sort of a spiked look and uh, so he was really, really unique and I really wanted to keep him, so he was one of the ones we kept. It kind of looks looks like the uh, Apistos, how they have the spike. Exactly. I wanted to maybe keep the potential of breeding him one day to see what might come of it. I don't know if that whole fin might wind up coming across spike like that one day in one of them. And that would be crazy. That would be crazy and it would look really, really cool in my opinion. So uh, that's kind of why we kept him, just to see what might happen one day. I got probably 20, 20 or so stirred by corridors in here. Yeah, I see them all over the place. Yeah, some some kind of, of my favorite. Everywhere. All right, let's move on to the next. All right. What are these fry? Those are the Hongsloy, Hong however you pronounce it. Pistogram of Hongsloy? That's how I say it. I don't know exactly, if that's how it's supposed those, to be said. Those are the ones. Uh, bred from someone locally, uh, joined in our, our society, our aquarium society. He. Uh, he decided he wanted to do some bartering, and I traded him some shrimp for uh, some really beautiful epistogramas that I can't wait for them to get big. I think what's going to happen with this tank, because there are epistogramas in here, is we're going to go ahead and turn this into a bit of a black water tank. So we're going to start adding tannins. Nice. So I might be picking up a, uh, a pack of some stuff from Tannin Aquatics and adding a bunch of debris to the floor here and getting some black water out of it. And Looks like you just did a water change? Yeah. <laughs> Had to. This Bob, is a Bob's uh, coming, 55 it. gallon, right? 55 gallon, uh, filled with lots of Anubias, a little bit of the Walbitis. There was some giant crypts in here. We had a melt back recently. It happens every so often. Yes, um, Gotta get the snail. There are some super red bristlenose placos in here. My breeding uh, pair, and there's a six-inch snowball placo. Now this is also a new one since I was here last. Yes, you're gonna notice a lot of changes, a lot of new things since you were here last. I think it was, it's been over a year. It's been, yeah, almost exactly a year. Yeah, like it's a been year. about a year, so uh, this is a really good update and uh, I hope everybody enjoys the changes. And you have some flowering up here as well. That's yes, nice. lots of flowering. I'm telling you, you just leave this stuff alone. Don't mess with it, don't move it. 
it just does its thing. It'll flower, it'll go. There ain't nothing but a uh, Finex Stingray on this tank. Beautiful fish. I've been really fancying the Epistogramas lately. Yeah, they're super fun to play with. Oh yeah, absolutely. Now I noticed no schooling fish in here. Any reason no, for that? No, nope. I uh, recently had some really big tiger barbs in here, but when I realized I was getting these baby Epistogramas, I wanted to get them out. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Yeah, so. So we're gonna make this one more of a biotope style. I mean, as you can see, it's already there just besides the black water, so. I think we're going to tint it up a little bit. And, and like the other tank, this is just regular gravel, right? Correct. Do you fertilize it all? Uh, I dose, um, but as little as possible in these tanks. I think that could be one of the reasons why the crib melted back. I'm not sure, but uh, we're going to. I'm basically not dosing at the moment, just in case that was what killed the cribs. Yeah, it could be, but you never really know. You never really know. It's one of those things that's a mystery. It's another nice nature tank. All right, so explain to me these these three you had, but they're all completely different. All right, so I got bored, and uh, the tanks kind of lost their way. We had some blackbeard algae and uh, a few other things kind of going on, so it was basically a lack of attention. So I decided I wanted to rescape them. Did a little homework, saw some iwigumi style. Uh, aquariums and it really really took to it so I wanted to go ahead and try it out for myself and see what kind of results I can come up with and we went with three different styles in these tanks all of them utilizing the same sort of rock which is the Dragonstone so you got three different scapes using the same kind of rock two of them are using just basic fluval stratum uh, one of them is mixed with some ADA aqua soil and that one's just a basic tan sand. So there's not really any growing medium in the substrate there. Yeah, but uh, it looks you don't really need it with this one, right? Nope. Uh, no. A few plants in the sand there. But a few plants in the sand. Uh, I have a Fluval 2.0, 48 inch, going across all of these nanos. So it's really high light on these nanos, and I think that's really what's doing it for me right now, maybe. Are these actually a red really, or is this just a... Those are the carbon red Rileys. Okay. And, uh, in the center tank, we have the clear, I think they're called Malawa shrimp. Yeah, I was looking for them, but I don't see them. Yeah, they're hard to spot. I can try to throw a little fish food in there. Probably because they're clear. Right. <laughs> That's stupid. That's going to be a little bit harder to see. This one has cherry shrimp. I tried weaning out all the carbon red Rileys out of this tank. So this one should just be uh, cherry, uh, red cherries. I tried going with the emergent style plant here, kind of going out of the tank. It doesn't seem to be doing very well at the moment. It's called an umbrella plant of some sort. What are you using as a foreground plant here? That one is Limno Aromatica. Oh, okay. And some Vesuvius in the back, I see. Some Vesuvius in the back, some nice big uh, Anubius on the rocks. Flowering again? Flowering again. Is this uh, petite or is this just Nana? The ones on the, that is Petite. Okay. And then what, what plants do we have here? That is Aereo Vietnam. Vietnam, all right. And that's some uh, Sturgeon Repens uh, with more Anubius Nana and Petite going on in there. Some Rotala in the back. Some Rotala in the back with some nice color. No CO2, still providing a really nice color. Yeah, it's kind of like that orange, orange pink kind of color. Yep. The undersides of the Aromatica and that third one over too, it provides a real nice purple. It's just a really nice setup. I like how you have the plants in between them. Right. I try to. Looks uh, really good. You guys know, you know, as always, I really try to utilize around the tanks as much as in the tanks. I try to bring the display out of it. It's one thing I don't have enough of. It's just generally or general house plants. Right. Exactly. All right. So clearly, we have a planet tank here. Forty breeder. Let's start with the light. What kind of light? Uh, this is Takashi Amano's favorite light, and it's called the ADA Solar One. It is a metal halide style light here, or halogen, I think. And uh, I've been fighting real, real bad about where it needs to be hung from the roof and how far from the tank. I've been fighting algae for a couple weeks. We went through the the green algae that gets all over your glass, and then we went. Now we're in a hair algae uh, little spring here but that is almost over. Every time I see something new, I just raise the light up one more notch. <laughs> Pretty much, it's just the easiest way for me to figure out what's going on, because I know I'm getting too much light, that's what's going on, so. I just raise it up a little bit more and a little bit more, and 
every time I do it, I get a little bit less. So now I see shrimp, but I don't see fish. There's no fish in here. There might be a couple bristlenose placos in here, but and one oh, autosynclus. Yeah, auto obviously. Yeah, but that's about it. The rest is just shrimp. So this is a uh, this is a very quiet tank. There's nothing but but plants going on in here right now. It is a dirty tank. There's Miracle Grow organic soil capped with sand. I do have CO2 running. I have a 20 pound canister that I use on multiple tanks. This one mainly at the moment. I can see actual real purling going on too. Oh yeah. Oh, and I haven't done a water change in this tank. <laughs> That's so. what I mean. <laughs> yeah. No water change in this one. Now can you name all these plants? Most of them. Um, What's this right here? I'm this kind of uh, this one in front, that's the uh, Limno Aromatica Same that you one. saw in the Nano tank there. And that's uh, basically its bigger version that doesn't stay compact. This is a compact carpeting version that's the taller style. Um, we're talking about this one right here. We have Macranda in here, Rotala Macranda. We have Rotala Florida, super rare plant, more Vietnam. We have some. Uh, Pogostamon Kimberly, we have Pogostamon, no that's not, uh, that's Pantanol, Pantanol, sorry, oh, that's we have, Kimberly, that's the Pantanol, yep, we have Limnobellum, oh, too many plants, too many plants, we have Ludwigia Super Red in the back, we got some A Flame Swords here, we have, what do, what do we got here? Uh, the ones here in the front, yeah. these are some Aerial Species, uh, this one here is Blood Vomit, this one is to be determined, and as well as this one to be determined. I just recently got those not too long ago. Um, I've been in contact with the gentleman I got them from about uh, plant IDs. I want to make sure because there's so many different species of even just the one type. So um, it's been real tough trying to keep track of all this. I have a whiteboard that I have recently that I've been writing down all the names of all the plants as I get them just so I can have some sort of track of what's going on here because this can get out of, out of hand pretty quick. Yep, I remember that when I was big on plants. Mm -hmm. I did not keep track of them. Well, it's So therefore tough. I just had to sell them as plant package. Right. Like various. Right. <laughs> which obviously undervalues it a lot. It does. Especially for these rare ones. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I've I actually I've never seen this one in person before. Oh, this one here? Yeah. That one's fun. I love it. It just, it, it's super easy to grow. Uh, I've grown it with CO2, without CO2, and uh, it seems to grow just fine both ways. As you can see, with CO2, it's a little bit more tightly compact. Is this an uh, AR Mini? Um, we the have red some one? of the Glandulosa here on the left side. That is an AR. Uh, I don't think it's the Mini. That's, that bad boy is going to get tall. Okay. Yeah, this tank Plants are great. super healthy. Everything's really, really, really nice, really healthy. I think I'm about ready to increase the CO2. So we can start getting some more color out of all these. It'll help with the algae as well. It will help with the algae as well. All right, so here we have the coffee table tank. Yeah. And uh, tell me about this tank. Is this a 22 long or no? Honestly, I'm not sure of the size, but it's it's a close to 36 long and 8 inches deep and about 10 inches tall. So I think it's around 20 to 22 gallons. Uh, I have my neon blue rice fish, the blue daisies. Also have some pencil fish. This tank once again, um, Anubius, and we have Japanese peace lilies as the terrestrial plant that grows up and out of the tank. Heavily rooted, heavily rooted. How long have you had those growing in here? Oh, those have been there for years. Uh, looks like it was, I was all the recently. Roots. Yeah, this tank was actually a gift recently to me. I decided that it was so nice that I wasn't going to mess with it, so I got this one, and it is exactly as it was as I got from the person who gifted it. Pretty nice gift. It's a pretty nice gift. <laughs> That's why I was jealous. like, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> gonna mess with it, I'm not gonna taint it. We're gonna add some life, livestock to it and, and call it a day. I think what most I might do at some point is, is get in here and clean up all these roots that are kind of binded through all the substrate from the peace lilies. But it's kind of cool though. But it's cool. And I think it's gonna be a great, great breeding grounds for all those fish. Because those rice fish are fairly easy to breed as it is, and in a habitat like this, I think they're just gonna go crazy. Well, they look great too. Super healthy. All right, so on film, this tank looks massive, but it looks like a 75? It's a 75 gallon uh, paludarium style, biotope style, filled with lots of wood, basically nothing but. 
there's twigs, there's big logs, a uh, bunch of debris on the floor from uh, that I ordered the Enigma pack from Tannin Aquatics. It's what's created the black water effect and the tannins in the water. This tank is virtually the easiest tank I have to maintain. This tank I've had to do virtually nothing with. I do minimal water changes. I feed very little. And this tank basically takes care of itself. It's just so loaded with beneficial bacteria. The water chemistry is just perfect and on point all the time. I have very low livestock in there, so there's not a whole lot of waste or anything going into the tank, so it helps maintain a stable environment. And what kind of a pisto is in here? These are a pistogram and McMasteri uh, breeding pair. There's several fry in here. They're obviously going to be swimming all through the debris on the ground there, which is what's given them a great habitat and safe, safe hidings from being eaten. Yeah, I've noticed uh, you kind of don't pull the fry out. No. You really have no need to. I have no need to. That's the beautiful thing about this tank, because I've had no need to pull any fry or the parents. And this tank is literally self-sustaining, as nature would do it. Are the epistles the only fish in here? Uh, I have epistogrammas. I have butterfly loaches, also known as hillstream loaches. All right, so what I use to create that waterfall is I bought your basic aquarium water pump, not a power head, water pump. I attached a uh, sponge filter to only come with a clear plastic tube. I attached one of them to the super glue to the intake side of the water pump. So I was able to then put a sponge filter around it so now I have sponge and, and uh, biological filtration. And on the exhaust side, I attached a rubber hose that you usually get from the canister filter, super glued it. And I ran the hose all the way up to the top of this big log here, kind of creating a water for the steps to the up there so that we have some water breakage. I planted the Gusphalandra, Weeping Moss, Anubias, and many other things up on the waterfall, and everything's just taken off and it's doing great. I run minimal CO2 in here. I do run CO2 as of lately. Uh, very minimal though, just because I want to get that Gusphalandra to grow real good. All right, there you have it. I want to thank Scott for having me out here. Be sure to check out his channel. All the links will be down below and popping up around here. Awesome, thanks, man. Awesome, I appreciate you, Bob, always for coming over. Hey, tell us, guys... uh, tell us a little about your channel, why, why we got Okay, here. so Scottish Aquatics, uh, we do a little bit of everything aquatic. Uh, we haven't done a whole lot of salt water. We have done it, but uh, we focus on fresh water. Oh, I forgot, there was salt water. We've had salt water. Uh, so I'd like to show you guys exactly what you can and can't do with your fish tanks as far as uh, nature goes, aquascapes. There's so many things that we do. Uh, we've bred discus, we breed epistogrammas, we've had monster fish. Anything you guys could think of, that's what we try to do. So you guys are welcome to check it out. The link is Scottish Aquatics on YouTube. Um, and it'll be floating around here somewhere. Yep. If you guys like fish, you guys like plants, check it out. You're going to love it. All right. Thank, thank you for coming. You. Thanks, Bob. Kiss, yep. You're so tall. <laughs> Let me get a stool.